Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about graph functions using compressions and stretches. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. So what is a vertical stretch or a vertical compression? Well, let's look at this image right here. We have our function f of x, which is in darker blue. A vertical stretch, two times that whole function, raises it up by the power of two. And we can see that in a teal vertical stretch, that's a teal graph that's dotted. A vertical compression, multiplying our function by 0.5, compresses it, almost cuts it in half, right? You can see that there. Compresses vertically there, that function. So I'd call that a vertical compression. It's in orange. So let's dive into a definition. Vertical stretches and compressions. Give a function, given a function f of x, a new function g of x is equal to a of f of x, where a is a constant, is a vertical stretch or vertical compression of the function f of x. If a is greater than zero, then the graph will be stretched. If zero is less than a, which is less than one, the graph will be compressed. If a is less than zero, then there will be a combination of a vertical stretch or a compression with a vertical flexion. Okay? All right. So let's go dive into an example right here. All right? Number 13. All right. So this graph here is a function P of T. All right? And it models the population of fruit flies. So we have a graph here that models the population of fruit flies, and what we want to do is a scientist is comparing this population to another population, Q, whose growth follows the same pattern but is twice as large. Twice as large. Same pattern, twice as large. So Q is twice as large as P of T. Same pattern. Okay? Sketch a graph of the population. Okay, so what we're going to do there is we take all of the values where we input and we're, we're going to double it or and double the output. So the first one for this first graph, we can see zero comma one, that point there. All right, we're going to double the output, which is zero two. Same input here. Next point three three, we can see on the graph, kind of curved up there. Double the output. So the x value is three. The y value is going to be six. Same thing here, input is 6, output became 2 of our graph there, so the new output is going to be 4 there, doubling 2, and lastly, 7 comma 0, double the output, well, it can't double 0, so it's just 0. And those points are guiding us to make this graph in orange. This is our Q of T. Our Q of T is equal to 2 of 2 times P of T, right there. And you can see all those values here, Q of T here, okay? All those values there is like guide points, but the whole graph is vertically stretched by a factor of two. All right, so let me erase this and we'll keep on moving forward. So we're given a table here for f of x. We don't know specifically what the function is, but we know our inputs are 2, 4, 6, and 8, and the corresponding outputs are 1, 3, 7, and 11. And we want to make a table here for g of x. Well, g of x is equal to 1 half of f of x. So if we want to find, let's say, g of 2, we say, okay, 1 half of times f of 2, okay? Well, f of 2 here, is 1, and 1 half times 1 is 1. All right, not too bad. So that value there for g of 2, oh sorry, it's not 1, it's 1 half. Oof, I almost got to cut myself there. So 1 half times 1 is 1 half. Be careful, good thing I caught it here. All right, so then with that information, we can make a tape. We're gonna keep making these values out, multiplying out. So g of x, let me write it out here. So when x was 2, g of x is going to be 1 half. We're going to keep applying that. If it's 4, we have 3 halves. I'm just doing the same process, but I'm not showing all the work here. 6 is 7 halves, and 8 is the input. The output would be 11 halves. 
okay? And so now we have a table here of g of x, which is a compression of f of x in table form. All right? All right, let me erase this and let's keep on going. So we want to recognize a vertical stretch. We have this graph g of x, okay? g of x is based off of the toolkit function f of x equals x to the third power. But it's some compression or stretch of it. So how do we go about trying to find that? Okay, well, let's go find a value that we can see on g of x. What is g of 2? Well, g of 2, x value is 2, the y value is 2 as well. And we use that as a base point. Okay, so this is a cubic function. What is f of 2? Well, f of 2 would be 2 to the third power, which is 8. So normally, when f of 2, uh, but to for x, we should get an output of 8. But g of 2 says it's an output of 2. So what do we know about that? Well, they're one-fourth off, right? So the outputs of g appear to be one-fourth the outputs of f, of, oops, f, okay? Because, we can see it here, because g of 2 is equal to one-fourth f of 2. So if we estimate that using the equations here, we can say g of x is equal to 1 fourth f of x. All right? And if f of x is x to the third power, g of x we can anticipate to be 1 fourth times x to the third power. And now we have a, an equation, roughly what we think g of x here is. All right, let me erase this and we'll keep on Moving forward. So now we have what well, we've already learned about vertical stretches and compressions. We're going to deal with horizontal stretches and compressions. So let's look at this image here. We have our function y equals x squared. Okay, it's in dark blue. Our first we have a horizontal compression there in that teal color. And it's moved in almost like in half. But notice, by, by cutting it in half, like pressing it in, we actually have a 2 in front of the x value. So we have y equals parentheses 2, of, or two times x, all of that being square. The horizontal stretch being pushed outwards is an orange. And we have 0 0.5 on the inside times x, all square. Okay? So it's almost like the opposite of what you might think, okay? that the horizontal compression has a larger value on the inside, and a horizontal stretch has the large value, uh, smaller value on the inside. Okay, but let's get to a true definition here for that. Horizontal stretches and compressions. Given a function f of x, a new function g of x equals f of b times x, where b is a constant, it is a horizontal stretch or horizontal compression of the function f of x. If b is greater than 1, then the graph will be compressed by 1 over b. If 0 is less than b, which is less than 1, then the graph will be stretched by 1 over b. If b is less than 0, then there will be a combination of, the, of a horizontal stretch or compression with a horizontal reflection. Okay? Alright. So what we're going to do here is we're going to dive into this example. All right, so suppose a scientist is comparing a population of fruit flies to a population that progresses through its lifespan twice as fast as the original population. In other words, this new population, R, will progress in one hour the same amount as the original population does in two hours. And in two hours, it will progress as much as the original population does in four hours. Sketch a graph of this population. So what do we know? Well, we know R of 1 is equal to p of 2, okay? So again, r is this new population, p is the existing one. r of 2 is equal to a population of 4 in general. So, or, and generally, we can say r of t is equal to p of 2t. Whatever is the inside, multiplied by 2, we have p of t there, okay? So, let's look at this graph here. We have our original graph, original population, P of T, which is A. 
we're compressing that horizontally, okay? We have two there, a value that's greater than one. And that is R of T. We can see that in part B, it's being, the whole thing is being compressed, compressed horizontally right there, okay? All right, so let me erase this and we'll keep on moving forward. Okay, so we're given f of x here, and it's a tab tabular function. We have x input, 2, 4, 6, 8, and the outputs are 1, 3, 7, 11 for f of x. We're given g of x is equal to f of 1 half of x, and we want to write g of x as a table, okay? So how do we, how do we go about doing that, okay? Well, what is g of 2, okay? What is g of 2? Well, g of 2 is equal to f of 1 half times 2, which is equal to f of, well, 1. 1 half times 2 is 1. But we don't have a value for f of 1. 1 for x is the input, okay? So our output, our input values for g need to be twice as large as the input values for f here, okay? So let's try another one, g of 4, okay? Well, so the input is 4 twice the value of the input of for x, so what's g of 4? That's f of 1 half times 4, which is equal to f of 2, which is equal to 1 here. And now we have a value there. So if we continue doing that, we can make our table. Okay? In that sense, we're, we're going to change our input values. We have to double them. So we have 4 here, 8, 12, and then 16. And by doubling them, we should get the same inputs as before, 1, 3, 7, and 11, right there. And so we would get our table here of x and g of x, right? x being the input, g of x being the output, and we have the same output values, but the, that occurs when we have different uh, input values, all right? And we can see that in our graph here. f of x is in blue, in the blue dots, and g of x is in, uh, in orange, um, the orange dots there, it's part next to it. Notice those values, the x values have almost, are doubled, in a sense, doubled, but the y values were still the same for each one of those dots. All right, let me erase this and keep on, keep it on. All right, so we're recognizing a horizontal compression of a graph. We're given this graph right here. We have two functions, g of x and f of x, and we want to relate these functions to each other. So when I look at that, I like to find, well, let's look at an endpoint there. The g endpoint, g of x has an endpoint, endpoint at uh, 2, comma 4, and f of x has an endpoint at 6, comma 4, okay? So f of x is the endpoint, these are the endpoints. Okay, endpoints at these values. So let's, let's look at that there. It looks like there's a compression going on from f of x to g of x, okay? So we can see that g of two equals f of six. So that six times one third is equal to two there. So with that, we can say we're pretty confident here that g of x is equal to f of three of x, right? kind of upset of that one third. So g of x is equal to f of three times x. So we have a horizontal compression of one third, okay? All right, hopefully you learned something here on how to graph functions using compressions and stretches. If you did, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. And as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com